to quote Sasha Valor, gender is a construct tear it apart. Hey and welcome back to another episode of me rambling about things. I noticed that I like to repeat words, so if I do just close one eye, yeah? Before I actually press record, I pull the card. Uh, and so I pulled the Queen of Cups. And to me, this card is very about the maternal figure, the feminine energy, and it's a very nurturing energy almost. Um, and again, <laughs> scarily true. It fits right in with what we're going to talk about today. So today I'm going to talk about how I teach my students in school to not conform to gender norms and stereotypes. It's the year 2020 now, and it's about time that we be more inclusive and we teach our children about uh, gender identity and expression and sexual identity, uh, sexual orientation, and you know, things like that because it is also important. Very harshly true, but this can really make or break someone uh, in terms of their mental health or even their physical health, their dysmorphia and uh, dysphoria and all that. So I really try not to perpetuate gender norms and stereotypes in my class. And I'm going to tell you a few ways that I do that you possibly can do in class as well. First, number one, boys line, girls line. This year, I started doing um, just two lines. In my older class, sometimes I will say, it doesn't matter if you're a girl or you're a boy or you don't identify as, as either gender. Uh, sometimes my, my students will ask, huh, like what, what, what are you talking about? And I explain to them, but sometimes... Sometimes my students actually know the terms non-binary. I'm a little bit surprised, but a little bit not surprised because of the, the, the this day and age of YouTube and all that. Information is literally at your fingertips. Sometimes, because they're so used to it, I will mix them up purposely and intentionally. This kind of thing is really hard for me to continue doing it. Um, I still try to, to do it here and there. Um, it's really hard because all the other teachers in school they always want girls and boys, male, female, male, female lines. And it's really hard for me to be like the only teacher. I still do it, but it's it's kind of hard to be the only one in the school doing it. Number two, during class monologues. So I sometimes I either write my own monologues or I find uh, samples online and I, I paraphrase it like the simple kids ones because I teach kids from 7 to 12 years old. And in these monologues, I will always, always try to break um, gender norms. For example, there was a monologue uh, of father baking and the, and, the, and the child wants to help. And cooking usually is seen as more of a feminine thing. I have no idea why. I love cooking. But I made sure to make the male be the chef. And in another monologue, I had one about superheroes. And where the line was, I've always dreamt about becoming a superhero like Wonder Woman or Iron Man. And I got the students to choose whichever monologue they want. And a lot of them chose this monologue. And some of them asked me, Teacher, can I please change the Wonder Woman? Of, of course, the boys will ask. Teacher, can I please change the Wonder Woman because I don't want to be a girl? And that, to me, is an opportunity for me to take and say like, Hey, this is just a monologue. Um, I'm not saying that you are a girl. You're just saying that you want to be a superpower. And I intentionally put Wonder Woman first before Iron Man because I wanted them to see that, you know, males don't always come first. Because it's very, it's, it's, it's a cycle, right? It's a loop. It just goes on and on and on again. And so this needs to stop somewhere. And number three, because I teach musical theater, it's very ensemble based thing. And so I have to write scripts for them. So in my scripts, I make the names of the characters extremely uh, gen gender vague. Is that a word? Okay, I'm just going to go with it. Um, so the names, for example, the name Reese, the name Drew, Blair, um, uh, Bez, all, all these names I use um, because I have different classes and so different genders get the, the, the names and they always ask me, teacher, is this a girl's name or a boy's name? And, I, and then I, I will ask them, do you identify as a male or a female? And if they say male or female or, or none, I say, yeah, then this name is for, for you. So... This is, what, this is one of the things that I do. For my younger students, because um, it's a little bit harder to teach them about this, I give them all alien names. 
So for example, Royal Lango and Marlinus and the Amikami. Last year, what I did was I just put Orphan 1, Orphan 2, Orphan 3, or Villager 1, Villager 2, and Villager 3. But this year, I wanted to be a little bit more hands-on with the whole gender stereotypes thing and, 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 and gender roles. So that's why I'm trying something out. Okay, and number four, which is the last one, the girls versus boys issues. So I always try to break away from this girls versus boys things because why, right? So for example, going in the elevator, most of the teachers will, will ask the girls to go in first because the girls are supposed to be the good ones, right? Um, no, I have some female students which are which really drive me up the wall. But so what I do is sometimes I, 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 I don't say, okay, this, this, this gender goes first, this gender goes first. I just let them all go in and then I stop when the elevator is full. And so like that, you don't perpetuate, okay, um, boys are always first or girls are always first. You know, the whole ladies are first thing and, and guys come, come in at number one and then breadwinners and all that. I, I, no, I, I don't like that. So I give everyone equal opportunity to equally be who they are. But piggybacking on that, I do, um, I do give chances to both genders when it comes to things like um, choosing the cast in class. So I don't want to make it seem like all girls got the lead roles uh, because the boys were not great. I will always mix them up because I want them to know that just because you are one gender, it does not make you any special. Even when it comes to scolding them, I rarely say, uh, all, all the girls are so noisy, all the, all the boys are so um, good, or the other way around. What I sometimes say though, is why can't the boys be more like the girls? And why I do this is not because I want to compare genders, it's because I want the boys to break away from that, that toxic masculinity uh, thing that, that a lot of people have now. I do talk about me putting on makeup to be on stage or putting on makeup just for fun. Or I do talk about me being in a dress, how I've worn a dress before and how I have wigs and how I have worn heels before. Because gender is a construct, right? To quote Sasha Valor, gender is a construct, tear it apart. It is. It is. There is no... Uh, there is no boys clothes and girls clothes. There's no boys names and girls names. It's just all everything is a construct. And so we need to break away from this, this, this really um, useless uh, construct. But that does not mean that, you know, we don't fight for equal rights. Because it's because of construct that we don't have equal rights. Because if we, we put one gender higher than the other and we shouldn't. And yeah. So this is what I do in my class. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my methods um, and let me know why. Maybe maybe I'm doing something wrong or maybe I can do something better um, because it's always a learning curve for me. So yeah, comment below and we can share our opinions. It's always a conversation and it's a good one to keep talking about and to keep having. And again, I am Ian Skatu. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will be posting more and I have more videos in line. So I hope to see you again soon. Till next time.